All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the 56th or 53rd edition, I'm <laughs> jumping ahead of myself, the 53rd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. There is so much to cover in today's video. I do appreciate your view. I will certainly try to cram as much information as possible into today's Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is enjoying their weekend safe and sound. It certainly has been an interesting weekend yet again across the UK with heavy rain and flooding as well as that record breaking winds also some record cold temperatures for the 5th of august yesterday where temperatures didn't get much above 13 celsius in a couple of spots in the midlands so certainly the interesting and rather upside down weather pattern continues across the uk as opposed to what we see in june july was record wet and august is getting off to a cool wet start as well this was the scene I just showed you from the neighbourhoods outside to the west of Beijing in China. A massive flood event took place thanks to the passage of a, a typhoon which brought record breaking rainfall to parts of eastern China in the last few days here. And uh, we'll look at Jim Yang's Twitter feed and it shows here that a maximum rainfall amount of 700, this is right, 744.8 millimetres of rain fell with this event. And that was the highest since Beijing had climate records going back to 1860. So very, very, very significant rainfall amounts in parts of China in the last week or so here. And, uh, you know, the Western Pacific is very, very active at the moment, while the Atlantic is rather quiet. But uh, we did see an excess of 500 millimetres of rainfall in parts of Beijing over a 24-hour period. So the extremes continue in, in several parts of China with regards to rainfall. And, uh, yeah, we are also talking about a lot of heat in parts of the hemisphere also. But while we're talking about heat in parts of the hemisphere, we're talking about a, a very, very remarkable cool start to the month of August for uh, parts of Europe. This is a, a two-day temperature anomaly here, and this is off weatherbell.com. And you can see here that we had a significant below-average day during the course of yesterday, in particular northeastern Iberia. Much of France was below average, firmly below average, in fact, a good uh, 10 12 celsius below seasonal averages and we also had temperatures a full nine degrees celsius below average in parts of the midlands and extending into the greater london area into east anglia it was a thoroughly cool even chilly august afternoon yesterday and look at, at the month overall um, if i can get to the right chart and um, that will be very helpful indeed this is the month of august so far by the way and you can see here firmly below average the core of the cool across say uh, parts of france but they uh, really you draw a line from the polish um ukraine lithuania border uh, east of that we've had above average temperatures uh to the west of that below average and uh, all of the uk and ireland is below average so far in august the question is how long does that continue it looks if like we are going to see a pattern change during the upcoming work week we'll look at that in tomorrow's video but uh, we do have uh, a firmly below average uh, regime over western europe at the moment here this is the global temperature anomaly here for the month of august so far and we've got a bit of a, a north south divide far north of greenland a below average then we've got a slice of above average here as you can see and then we've got below average across southern greenland um northwestern portions of africa below average the eastern united states is below average and we've also got below average across the western united states believe it or not we have got below average to start the month of august here um, the southern plains above average look at australia very warm compared to average look at northern parts of north america firmly above average as well including alaska it's got off to a very warm august indeed here very warm across the far north of russia here some areas um, below average in the far east 
but there is a lot of warmth stacked up across the northern hemisphere but also the southern hemisphere despite uh, parts of so southern africa being firmly below average to start the month we've got warmer than average across parts of the central and eastern uh, sahara like i said slightly below average across parts of a uh, of uh, morocco and the western states as you can see but uh, that is a fairly warm start to the month of august and it looks as if the, the month of july has been the warmest on record certainly since satellites began and uh, there is some plausible reasoning for that south america by the way is seeing an incredible heat wave given the fact that it's you know the equivalent of february down in the southern hemisphere at the moment um you know versus what we would typically see uh, during the month of uh, of february up here in the northern hemisphere of course but the uh, of course for august it is the second uh or final meteorological month of winter down there and uh, it, it is remarkably warm and the, probably the reason for that is thanks to the uh thanks to the the el nino of course going off at the moment here so that is uh, certainly heating things up across the South American continent here. You see here the warmest waters compared to average. This is off the NOAA site, by the way, uh, is across the Northwest Atlantic here. We've got a warmer than average uh, main development region of the tropic, tropical Atlantic, of course. We've got a lot of typhoon activity, of course, uh, across the Western Pacific at the moment here. And you can see here this cold pocket to the south of Japan, Okinawa, down to the Philippines, and Taiwan and the reason why is that it's simply upwelling of water thanks to those typhoons going off uh, in this region of, of the world here so it's been a very busy spell at the moment and hence why we've seen such record breaking rainfall in this region of the world. The monsoon season has been remarkable especially across northwest India this is off Vadri's or uh, um, Vadri's of weather um, from Rajesh Kapadia his website and you can see here rainfall amounts and this is just by the way monthly rainfall amounts and you can see here this is a um, um ma ma sin aram ma sin aram is that how you pronounce it i could be wrong with that that i believe that is one of the wettest parts of the planet anyway generally when the monsoon season is ongoing but in the last month so for the month of july we've seen nearly six thousand millimeters of rain in this region here and uh, Patagon uh, in Maharashtra a province uh, has seen 5,000 millimeters of rainfall here so some remarkable amounts of rainfall even for the monsoon these are some very very significant rain amounts uh, over the past month of July in parts of northwestern India so uh, you know going against the typical um, you know La Nina to El Nino transition usually that has a detrimental effect on the monsoon season but we've not seen that being the case in this region of the world in 2023 so far um so yeah uh, thanks to rajesh's site here for some of these figures so uh, in today's video i wanted to look a little bit about uh, you know the the recent surge in global warming in particular now of course we've had very very warm temperatures compared to average anyway over the antarctic peninsula that has of course been skewing the global temperature we have got a record low july our antarctic sea ice we've got the 14th lowest i believe in the arctic but we're seeing some incredible warmth initially across the southern hemisphere but we're also seeing remarkable heat waves across a uh, in, in 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 areas of western north america of course the mediterranean basin southern europe and as well as that parts of eastern asia we've seen remarkable heat wave conditions and it's interesting going to the research recent new research has shown some findings with regards to the hunga tonga hunga volcanic eruption in january 2022 explains short long uh, short-term global warming this is uh this is a tweet here by robin Mon monotti and you can see here that this is a tweet here saying that huge amount of water vapor vapor hurled into the atmosphere as detected by the nasa microwave limb sounder and could end up temporarily warming earth's surface when the volcanic eruption took place in the southwest pacific 
eruption in January 15, 2022. It sent a tsunami racing around the world and set off a sonic boom that circled the globe twice. The underwater eruption in the South Pacific also blasted an enormous plume of water vapor into the Earth's stratosphere, enough to fill more than 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The sheer amount of water vapor could be enough to temporarily affect Earth's global average temperature. We've seen it. We've never seen anything like it," said Louis um, Malin, Milan, an atmospheric scientist uh, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. He led a new study examining the amount of water vapor that the Tonga volcanic eruption ejected into the stratosphere. The layer of the atmosphere, um, you know, between eight and thirty-three miles above the Earth's surface. So, you know, there's no getting away from it. Water vapor, uh, you know, contributes to a tremendous amount of uh, of warming. You know, there's a lot of attribution uh, given to uh, carbon dioxide, but this is almost a perfect example of what happens when you release a tremendous amount of water vapor into Earth's atmosphere here. And there's no getting away from the fact that since, uh, you know, mid-March 2023 in particular, this is a tweet by uh, Dr. Ryan Maui, uh, and showing a dramatic one Celsius warming in a matter of two weeks raised the global temperature to the record levels we're set at today. And this is likely a, a direct response to that volcanic eruption taking place here, which really throws quite the curveball in terms of the global warming argument. And the fact that the global sea surface temperatures are so warm and over the, the North Pacific, uh, we've got then tremendous amounts of warmth across parts of South America. The, the Antarctic Peninsula, and then, of course, during the summer season this year, we've seen tremendous heat records being set. The question mark is, is it is this enhancing the, the global warming trend that we've got at the moment? That is, of course, a big, big question, but a very interesting one at that. So in today's video, I wanted to just simply share some of these ideas, these thoughts with regards to that. I don't have enough time to look into it in much more detail than I'm doing at the moment here, but it certainly is very, very interesting stuff indeed with regards to the global temperature. El Nino, it looks as if we are going to see uh, some weakening over the far eastern portion of the Pacific. We are seeing the strongest warming compared to average, possibly going to be into the central Pacific for the upcoming winter season. And we'll look at what potential impacts that may have over the, uh, you know, for the boreal northern, for the boreal northern hemisphere winter coming up in 2023-24 um, but it is there is a lot of interesting things going on at the moment here folks and a, a lot of plausible reasoning for such strong warming across the planet that day uh, you know that lag effect from that eruption back in January 2022 to the warming that we're seeing now may last for a few years but of course the development developing El Nino is not going to help either because that is going to enhance the warming coinciding with this um this volcanic eruption of course that took place a, a year and a half ago and you know let's w watch and see what happens certainly the the development of this summer pattern has been interesting strong warming initially uh, in the month of june for the uk and northwestern europe then we've seen a, a turnaround taking place and now we're seeing some remarkable amounts of rainfall i believe that is a byproduct of the developing El Nino that was built into the forecast back in May saying that we would see the turnaround from dry to wet this upcoming summer we've seen that looks like we're continuing with that there is also a possibility of a reprieve in the pattern during the second half of August with a drier more high pressure pattern but we'll watch this space and see how long this surge of warmth that develops during the second half of the upcoming work week how long does it last we'll look into the details of that coming up in the the coming days here on the channel if you haven't already done so be sure to hit the subscribe button i'm closing in on 5,000 subscribers if you're enjoying the content please hit the like button show youtube that you are enjoying the content and also continue to watch this space we've got a lot of exciting things to come on marfogunweather.com in the coming weeks and months with the build-up of the winter forecast and showing you things that you're not seeing elsewhere so i'm trying to see if i've covered everything uh, even with regards to the autumn season, I don't typically do an autumn forecast, but I will be sharing some ideas with the autumn coming up. So that's it for today.
I appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe if you, if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.